rough thing is sometimes he has to squeeze you a little bit to allow you to get back in right relationship with somebody. And every time we get out of, out of a relationship with God, that's what he does. He'll take us up, pick us up in his hand, and just squeeze us a little bit. Let us know that, hey, we're safer in the hands of God than we are in the world. Amen? You always remember that when you start uh, thinking that you can do without God. You can't do it. It's an impossibility. Always remember that. When you're in God's hand, you're in the safest place. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn to the book of Ephesians. I'm going to be preaching this morning on the Christian soldier's secret weapon. Did you know you got a secret weapon this morning? Sometimes secret weapons are, are made to use in an emergency. But the secret weapon I'm going to talk to you about this morning should be used lots of times. Every day. It may be a secret weapon to the world, but it's not a secret we weapon to Christians. Well, Ephesians, 6, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it says this. And the first word in 6, 18 is what? Pray. Pray. That's our secret weapon, folks. Pray. When everything else fails, we need to pray. But what we try to do sometimes is do things in our own strengths and our own ways and fail. And that's when we turn to God and get on our knees and start praying. Amen? But if we start praying first, it'll be a lot better for us. So prayer, I think this morning, is a secret weapon that's uh, not used enough by Christians. Let me just ask you a question this morning. How much time do you spend in prayer? You don't have to answer. You know how much you spend in prayer. As far as me, I don't pray enough. I'll just be honest with you. And I don't believe anybody in here this morning does either. Sometimes we go to bed and we'll say, oh, now lay me down to sleep prayer and turn over and go to sleep. I'm talking about real heartfelt prayer. Touching the shores of heaven and getting in touch with God. Do you know when you uh, get in touch with God when you've reached heaven? Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. When I pray from my heart, not just saying words, I mean, I reach heaven. Sometimes when we pray from our heart, rather than just spending time on our knees, see, sometimes we get in the habit of just getting on our knees and saying random words to God. Bless me, my house, my four, no more. You know, but we need to have a heartfelt session with Jesus practically every day. How much time we spend in prayer determines how we're going to react to the world. Always remember that. How much time you spend with God is going to have lead us in how we react to situations in the world. And uh, <coughs> praying always brings us closer to God. He don't move close to us, but he will. He says, draw nigh to me and what? I'll draw nigh to you. So if you get close to God, he'll get close to you. We sometimes try to worship God and we ain't even talk to him all week. How would you do, how would you feel if you went all week long not talking to your wife or your husband or your children? Well, you'd grow apart, wouldn't you? And that's what happens to Christian people, folks. When they don't talk to God, they, they draw away. God never moved. We're the people that move away from God. He never moves. He stays the same. Same today, yesterday, and he'll be the same forever. 
All we got to do is call out to him. He said, Jeremiah said, call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things which you know not. And the reason we don't know many things about uh, religion and Christianity because we don't talk to God about it. If you need to know something, won't you ask God? And we run around in the middle of the town and ask everybody else except God what to do in situations. Did you know God knows everything and he knows everything about you and what you need to be doing every day? He knows more about you than you know about yourself. Amen? So I want to be preaching to you this morning on the Christian secret weapon. Well, the secret weapon is what? Praying. Praying. Pray get a hold of God. Well, stay up praying, get a hold of God until you get an answer. You know what we do a lot of times during the day or whenever you pray? We say that little short prayer sometimes and we say, well, I've done my deed today. I prayed. I talked to God. And we'll get up and we're going about our business. When God's still standing there at all. Where's he going? Where are they going? Well, well, praying. Praying is a sp spiritual activity in which we, the child of God engages the Heavenly Father in a two-way dialogue. See, it goes two ways. You talk to God, He listens, He'll talk to you, and you listen. Amen? Sometimes we don't listen to God. How do we know we're talking to God? Because He's going to talk back. Did you know you can know the voice of God? Huh? You can know the voice of God. Because he's got a voice like no other. You know, you can turn on the radio like a lot of people to do today at a country music station. And they can tell you every artist that sings it because they know the voice. Amen? Well, they turn on a gospel station and uh, they hardly ever recognize the gospel singers. Amen? That's the way it is with God. When we talk to God, he'll talk back and we listen and he'll listen. So always remember that. You're not, you're not talking to somebody that, uh, that's going to turn you away, but he puts a ear close to you. So always remember that. Praying is an activity that we need to occupy every day. Prayer is a secret weapon that's misused or sometimes never used. You know when most people pray, folks, in times of trouble, in times of need. Have you ever prayed and not ever asked God for anything just to give him blessing, just to return blessings to him? Try it sometime. When you pray, don't ask for nothing. Because you probably got everything you need anyway. Amen? But you know what? We as people want more and more and more. And who do we go to get it? We can't go to the pocketbook because we don't have enough money to buy what we really need. We go to God. We know he will supply our needs according to his riches and glory. So remember that. Pray is a spiritual activity we need to undertake every day. Pray <coughs> sometimes. The Bible teaches us that we need to pray without what? Ceasing. Does that mean we go around praying all the time every minute of the day? Of course not. What that means is we need to be in an attitude of prayer. Always be ready to pray. If a, a situation comes up in your life and you had not prayed, be ready to pray at that instant when a situation arrives. Be ready. And uh, God will open the doors of heaven and he'll pour out the blessings that you can't even contain. Remember that. God will bless your prayer. But because we don't receive the blessings, we sometimes just give up. Huh? You know why God don't answer prayer sometimes? Because he knows exactly what we really need. We pray sometimes and pray amiss. Pray for things that don't amount to a hill of beans. If that's correct English. Well, the definition of the secret weapon is prayer. It's an activity. Do you participate in that activity? 
We can participate in a lot of activities in the world, but don't participate in an activity that's going to help us in our spiritual walk with Jesus. Why not change our activities sometimes? You see, you know, we enroll our kids and our grandkids in activities outside of school, and they participate in baseball games, soccer, whatever, and they, they get active in it. So why shouldn't we as God's people get active in prayer? I believe that if we would start practicing praying, we we'll see more done through the hands of God. Amen? Are y'all here this morning? Are y'all help me out now? I hate to preach to a dead audience. Can I get some help this morning? Thank you. I don't get some help, I'm going to call Floyd Mortal with <laughs> Or Bobo's. Or Lance Apollo. Somebody. Amen. Praying is a spiritual activity in which we call, the child of God calls on God and engages with the Heavenly Father. What better thing to do is to talk to a, a God that loves us. Well, you love your children, don't you, for those that's got children? Wouldn't you give them anything that you uh, could if you could afford it? Amen. 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 I would. But a lot of things God don't give us because he knows we would abuse it and we really don't need it. Praying a meal. All right. Prayer is something we can practice any time. Huh? Practice anytime, anywhere, and for any purpose. Right? We can pray anywhere. How many of you pray on your job? Well, oh, I usually have to pray a lot. When I'm, when I'm retired, I have to ask God to help me with Jesus. Those things will be going so bad, they make me want to preach a cuss. Huh? Pray anytime. Well, Pray is an activity. Pray anytime, anywhere, and, in, and for any purpose. Is there anything that we would be afraid to ask God for? It shouldn't be. Well, he's an almighty God. He's almighty. He's all-knowing. And he already knows what we need before we ask. Amen? Amen. So why not ask? He just wants us to tell him what he already knows. Amen. Sometimes I believe we're afraid of God. Afraid to approach him. He'll never turn one of his children away, folks. I'm telling you. We got uh, uh, to go to him in confidence. Have confidence in Jesus. Huh? That he will never forsake us. And he'll never leave us. Huh? That's my God. I can go to him anytime, anywhere, and for any purpose. Hmm? How would you feel if you had a sick child and you never prayed for him? Hmm? Did you know God answers some prayers but even before we ask? He'll answer prayers sometimes even before we ask. Hmm? We can practice anytime, anywhere, and for any purpose. I'm going to give you a few thoughts on prayer this morning. Why am I saying on prayer this morning? Because I believe it's a powerful tool that we as God's people, I hate to say this word, abuse. Hmm? Or don't use, if you would. You see what I'm saying? Abuse is not a good word, but we fail to use it. Hmm? We pray when it's a have-to case. Amen. We pray when we have to. It shouldn't be a have-to case according to us as Christians. I like to talk to God. Even sometimes He doesn't talk back immediately. But I know that He hears us. Not only does He hear us, folks, but He answers us. Huh? Well, prayer is a process when we put on the armor of God. 
When we go to God, he allows us to put on the armor of God in front of him. See, we're soldiers this morning. And a soldier never goes to war, Brother Mike, without putting on his armor. Hmm? That protection that we need in the world. If you leave your house every morning without putting on the armor of God, you're in big trouble. Because the Satan, the devil, will have a, a heyday on you. But see, the armor of God protects us, especially the shield. It protects our inner being, the inner most parts of our body, especially the heart. Why the heart? Because that's where the resources of life avail in our lives. We need to realize that God protects our heart. Pray with your heart. You see, a lot of times we pray with our mind. That's a good thing, pray with your mind. But pray from your heart. Allow God to see your heart. See, prayer is a process that we put on the armor of God. Armor of God protects us. Did you know there's only, uh, when we put on the armor of God, it's only from the front to protect us? You don't have anything for the back portion of your body. Why? Because we don't ever look back. We keep going. Fighting in the back, huh? Amen. Well, <clears throat> the power of prayer enables us to go forth in the battle for the Lord. Jesus never sounds retreat, y'all. Never. He always says, go forth. Go forth. Go on. Don't stop. Don't give up. And too many people find a way of living for the Lord rough sometimes. And what do they do? It's no use. They give up, throw up their hands, and quit. They quit on the church. But first of all, they quit on God. And when you quit on God, you're in deep, deep trouble. Never quit on God because he will never quit on you. I don't care where you go in life. I don't care what you've done in life. God will never leave you fatherless. Mm. He will always be your heavenly father. Mm. We put on the armor of God. The power that enables us to go forth in the battle for the Lord. You know, sometimes the Lord will fight for us. But sometimes he wants us to fight for ourselves. Mm. Now he is our protector. And he's not going to allow anything come to you. Unless first it has been sifted through his hand. Anything that comes your way, it's already passed through his hand. Did you realize that? Now, he's not going to allow anything to harm you or hurt you, but it's going to help you. Help you. When you need help, who do you go to? Hmm? 911. That's Jesus. Jeremiah 33 3. Call unto me, and I'll what? Show you great, mighty things which you know not. Huh? Well, putting on the armor of God. It takes a little time every day to put it on. I don't know where you start, but I start with the breastplate. Hmm? I put on the, have my feet shod with the preparation for God. Huh? Hmm? And I carry my shield with me. You know what the shield does, don't you? It knocks down those fiery darts of the devil. You gotta be fast. Knocking them fiery darts down. Hmm? Did you know the shield of faith will knock down every dart that the devil uh, points at you or throws at you? How faith in Jesus Christ and the faith, the shield of faith will knock down those fiery darts. Did you know that uh, the, the shield, as I read somewhere where when they went to war, those shields would be soaked in some kind of oil or something. That when them darts would hit them, it wouldn't stick. Just fall away, fall away. And that's why our, our life needs to be shielded with the armor of God, the shield of faith. Without faith, what? We cannot please God. But if you've got faith, the Bible says, of a mustard seed, the smallest little seed there is, we can move mountains. We got any mountain builders in here this morning? Mountain movers. Sometimes we build up mountains, but sometimes we need to be tearing mountains down. Hmm? 
Uh, this guy was praying one time in the mountain for him, and he knew he had to go on, on further down the road. He had to stop over that night and spend the night somewhere and ask God to remove that mountain. Move that mountain for me, God. Got up the next morning, guess what? Mountain's still there. Just like I thought. He wouldn't answer. See, he didn't have confidence in God. He realized that, that he didn't pray enough, but if he was sincerely got a hold of God, God probably would have moved that mountain for him. I don't know what mountain you're facing this morning, but you just realize God can take it away from you. If he don't move the mountain, he'll make a way through it, praise God. Amen? Amen. Amen. You ever realize when you go to the mountains or up in the mountains, they got them little tunnels you have to go through? That's the way God will do to your troubles. That mountain might be a trouble in your life, but he'll make a pass you're going through. Amen? Yes, Always remember that. Faith. Faith can move mountains. Do you have that kind of faith to move mountains? Well, the power of prayer enables us to go forth into the fiercest battle. Sometimes battles, some battles are worse than others. Hmm? But sometimes the battles is not that big. And you know what we do? We fret over the little stuff sometimes. When, when we face something big, we certainly, we crush. Well, it crushes. Well, the practice by which we appropriate uh, 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 God's artillery. See, we have an artillery. Number one artillery is prayer. Huh? Prayer ought to be the first thing we do every day to help us through the day. Asking God to help us in everything we do. Just like uh, uh, when we get up, how do you do, what do you do when you get up? Your first thing you do is start preparing for work, don't you? Well, that's where it ought to be in God's, God's community. We should prepare to work in God's vineyard, amen? Yeah. Be busy about the Father's business. We need to prepare ourselves. Get equipped. Put on the armor of God before you go out. Hmm? We need to have God's artillery, which is the armor of God. Prayer is the greatest force ever leased upon the earth. Do you know that? It is the greatest force ever leased upon the earth and the single most powerful weapon at the Christian's disposal. That's the greatest and the most powerful weapon that God has given us. It's the power of prayer. And if it's the most powerful thing that we have, folks, as, as God's people, why aren't we using it? Hmm? Why aren't we using it? I think sometimes it's laziness. We don't want to pray. Like I told you earlier, we pray when we have to. Hmm? It will be a mandate that you pray. Pray. Prayer is the greatest force leased upon the earth and the single most weapon as Christians disposal. But it's misused or not used. The world may someday find a way to close our churches, to take away our Bible. They can never be able to stop God's people from calling on the name of our Heavenly Father. You see, they can take away our churches. They can take away our Bibles. They can't take away what we've got hid in our heart, which is the Word of God. The Bible says, hide the Word in your heart that what? You might not sin against God. You see, they can't take that away. They can take the written Word away from us. But let me tell you something. If you've got God's Word in your heart, it's there to stay. That's why it's important, folks, for us to get into the Word of God and let the Word of God get into us. Amen? Right. That's, what, that's what we do. We, we just casually scan over the Word of God and we never let it penetrate and go into our heart. The Bible says, The Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen? So we need to get the Word of God in us. You see, yeah. well, I, I sometimes think about this. Uh, I've been used to, I'd visit homes, 
And I see it. I never will forget. Well, let me just say this. I never will forget years ago, me and Spanky was uh, uh, talking to a guy that pulled into the church uh, parking lot one evening, and he was wanting some help. And I asked him about Christian and Christianity and where he went to church. And I finally boiled him down to, I said, well, who's your pastor? What's your pastor's name? Uh, uh, anybody goes to a church regularly want to know who the pastor is, amen? He didn't know who the pastor was. Uh, I said, do you read your Bible? Oh, yeah, I got my Bible in the car. I said, go get it. He went to the car and got his Bible. He handed it to me, and I started opening it, and the pages were stuck together. I could tell that Bible hadn't been opened for I don't know how long. If you don't open your Bible, the pages are going to stick together. Amen? That's why it needs to be used. Mm. Did you know if you use it, you'll never wear it out? But if you really leave it laying around, it'll wear itself out. It'll be no good. Because the pages will eventually stick together. Mm. Mm. Prayer is the greatest force ever leashed upon not only the earth, but in our presence, we can pray. Huh? It's leashed upon us. And God gave it to us to reach him. Hmm? It's a, it's a, if you would, a, what should I say, a communication between us and him. But not only us to him, but him to us. Hmm? You see, when we pray, sounds go up. Not only do sounds go up, sounds come down. Mm -hmm. Our sounds going up to heaven will cause sounds to come back from heaven with an answer to our prayer. Well, mm, the world may someday find a way to close our churches, take away our Bibles, but they can never take away and be able to stop God's people from calling on his name. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they do. They can take your Bibles. They can even close the churches. They'll never be able to to take away your time of calling on God. Remember that. Suppose they would take away our church this morning. Officers come in and say, you gotta get out. We may have to back evacuate. Let me tell you something. This is just a, a housing where we worship God. We are the church. Hmm? Yeah. We are the church. Not only this congregation, but everyone that's meeting in the name of Jesus this morning is a part of the church, God's church. If you're saved, you're part of God's assembly this morning. You're part of his church. You see, they can take away the Bible. They can take away our meetings. They can take away everything that has to do with Christianity. But if you're saved, they can never take that away from you. And when you're saved, you got access to the greatest power ever leashed upon this earth. Talking about atomic bombs now. Hmm? Atomic bomb don't hold no, 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 no weight to a, the prayer life of a Christian. Hmm? Do you believe that? It's dynamite power, dynamite power. It explodes. Hmm? Well, they can never stop God's people from calling on the name of our Heavenly Father. I'm glad I got access to someone that knows more than I do. I'm glad I know I got somebody that's got all power and all knowing, that knows everything about me and knows everything that's going on in this. To him, it's just a minor thing in the world. See? The world is big to us as God's people, but hey, it's just a it's it's just a small thing to him, folks. It's just small. You know what else about prayer? Prayer brings the Christians into the presence, listen, to an almighty, to an all powerful God. Have you ever been in the presence of God? 
I've been in meetings before, folks, that people could, the men would be praying. I remember we used to go to a lot of revivals, and they'd have a tent down behind the tabernacle, and the men would gather in that tent and pray. Listen to this. Believe it or not, Brother William, them grown men getting in that tent on their knees, some of them get prostrate before God. Start calling out the name on the name of Jesus. Well, believe this or not, if you were in that tent, you could feel that tent start moving. People praying. That tent would go. I realized that I was in the presence of God. That was the breath of God just moving in on that place. Mm, I believe that. You see, when we pray, God moves in with us. Mm. And we can get as close to God as we want to if we just pray. Mm. Pray. When you pray, God reveals his presence to you. You say you can't feel God. Well, I can. I feel him right now. Glory to God. I feel him in my heart. Hmm? Well, prayer brings the Christian into the presence of an almighty God. Prayer brings the power of God to bear in the life of, of, of his saints. You see, we've got the power of God this morning, folks. You need to use it. The power of God. We ain't no merely man little uh, side of the road somebody. We're his child. We've got God's power. Hmm? Power of God. We can use the power of God to our advantage. Hmm? Well, using God's power to bear, bear in the life of the saints. If we've got the power of God, why aren't we utilizing it? Huh? We just take it for granted. Sometimes we don't even realize that God's power is with us and in us. Well, Someone wrote one time that we're no more like Jesus than when we're giving, Brother Darrell. But I say this, we're no more like Jesus than when we're praying. Mm -hmm. Jesus prayed, prayed a lot. Sometimes he went off by himself and prayed. Mm -hmm. Remember when he went in the garden and prayed and left the disciples uh, uh, behind and went in there and prayed? Mm -hmm. And that was the day he was arrested. But he was praying because there was a, a hard day coming before him. It was coming to, he knew he was going to be arrested and have to go to the cross and die for the sins of the entire world. But he prayed. He was a praying God. He was a praying Jesus. Well, someone said we're no more like Jesus when we're giving. I believe a lot of pastors didn't use that to make people give. But I say we're no more like Jesus when we're praying. Mm -hmm. How much do you pray every day? Let me tell you something. It don't matter how much you pray. It's how you pray. You know what prayer is? It's talking to God. Just like y'all, me, everybody in here, stop and have conversations with other people. Talk about the weather. Talk about this. Talk about sports. Did you know we can talk about anything in the presence of God? And he knows something about everything. Hmm? Darrell, you need to talk to him about them game cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just did. You too, Scott. <laughs> well, talking to Jesus, that's prayer. Prayer. Get a hold of God. Sometimes we need to Get a hold of God and don't move until we get an answer. Hmm? But while we do, we, we reach heaven, think we're in tune with God, and we get up, say amen, thank you God, and go on about our business. Well, well, people call have called on God's name since uh, time immortal. They've been calling on God since the days of yore. Hmm? And it's still going on today. Prayer is essential in the life of every Christian. 
If you're not praying, you're not believing God. But if you're believing God, you're going to spend some time in prayer talking to God. Mm -hmm. At least a little bit of time. So, uh, prayer has been heard. People have been helped and strengthened through prayer. Prayer strengthens not only you, but it strengthens those that you're praying for. Hmm? Why don't we pray when we know we've got a, a tool that reaches God? And we can see great things happen when we pray. Great things will happen. Hmm? Hmm. Prayer is an exercise, an exercise that God blesses. Well, God blesses prayer. You see? And I say to you this morning, Examine your time in prayer. How much time are you spending? Is it a little bit, some, whatever? I've heard people say, Brother Scott, I prayed all night last night. I prayed all night. Well, I don't believe it. It's hard to pray all night long. Huh? You know what I've done before? We pray. Sometimes I go to bed and I lay down and pray. When I do that, you know what now? I'm gone. Huh? So that's not a good practice. We need to pray kneeling, being obedient to God, and bowing before Him, and letting our prayers rise up to Him. Well, you know what, though? This praying isn't, isn't, isn't enough. We need, when we pray, we need to have a clean heart. We need to have to be clean people. God will not bless our prayers if we're not clean on the inside. Always make sure you have a clean heart. Be cleaned up inside. Well, we need to pray with a clean heart. We need to pray in faith. What does that mean? Believing God is going to react to our prayers, that God's going to answer them. If we're going to pray, pray believing. Believing God's going to answer. If you don't believe God's going to answer, you might as well not pray. Huh? Hmm? Pray in faith. We can be sure that God will hear and answer our prayer if we just pray with a clean heart. Hmm. Prayer should be a Constant. Prayer should be constant. See, does that mean that we have to go around praying all the time? No. Constant means praying always. Have an attitude of prayer. And the Bible says in the Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Be in constant state of communion with God. That's what that means. I mean, we don't have to go around praying all day long, but have a mindset of having a daily communion with God, huh? Have a mind set up on a prayer that we could pray anytime, anywhere, and pray immediately. Hmm? Just like I said earlier, what if your child or someone in your household was sick and you needed a prayer and you've got hidden sin in your life and you can't pray? Hmm? You might well not pray if you got sin in your life because God ain't going to hear it. Hmm? I never want to forget years ago my mom uh, was sick in the bed with cancer. And I went down there and she said, Ron, pray for me. I started to pray. I said, Mama, I can't pray. Why, son? She got me. She nailed it, brother. I had sin in my life. That, it wasn't that I wasn't a Christian, Daryl. I was saved and you were saved. But there was things in my life that I knew was wrong, and it was sin. No particular sin at all. And I couldn't pray because of that. I knew God would answer me. But you know what I did? I knelt by her bedside. I confessed my sins right there and then. And asked God to forgive me of every one of my sins. I said, Amen. I laid my hands on my mama and I prayed earnestly and 
repel me and ask God to touch her body. So I, I had to get right so she could be right. Amen? So never think that you can fool God. He knows everything about you. If you try to pray with sin in your life, you can forget it. Hmm? That's what I thought. Pray in faith. And we can be sure that God will answer in his way and in his time. Sometimes we think when we got a, a instant God, like instant coffee or something, pray and he snaps to it like that. Not, not like that. Sometimes God puts us on hold. You don't need that today. Come back another day and ask. Then I'll give it to you. Hmm? Well, hmm. I gotta hurry, y'all. I ain't gonna get through anyway. I'll give you this point and we'll stop. A description of our spiritual weapon. Prayer should be constant, always praying without ceasing, being caught to a, a constant state of communion with God. We should walk in constant, uh, in a sense of awareness of His presence. If we've been praying and we know that God has heard us, we'll, we'll sense the next time we go to God in prayer, we'll sense his presence. We'll know he's there with us. Hmm? Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Yeah, sometimes we don't want to get close to God because the closer we get to God, the more it reveals who we really are. Hmm? Think about it. Maintain an intimacy with him. Hmm? Remain close and clean in the world. Don't any, allow anything to interfere with your prayer life. Hmm? Years ago when I was on a second shift, y'all, it never failed. I'd get ready to go to work. I'd always pray before I'd go to work. I'd always have to be at work around one or two o'clock in, in the afternoon and I would pray. I would bit more get down by my bed and start praying and guess what? Or ring, ring. There was always something that interfered with me, interrupting my prayer time. You know what I started doing? I wouldn't answer the phone when I was start to pray and I wouldn't go to the door. But most of the people that knew if my truck or car was there, and I was in there, and they'd go. They would never give up until I went to the door. I started sometimes to God take care of them for me. Get rid of them. But they knew I'd be in there, and they'd keep knocking and knocking. You ever hear that old song? Keep on knocking, but you can't come in. That's what I wanted to tell them. Keep on knocking, but you ain't coming in. Half the time, you know what it was? Somebody want to sell something, or give you something, try to sell you magazines and this and that. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Get out of here, man. Well, when can I come back? You can't. <laughs> Don't come back my way. I didn't need no magazines. Well, we should be, we should, should walk in a constant sense of awareness God's presence, folks. Maintain an intimacy with Him. Hmm? Remain close and clean in the world. Don't anybody have anything to interfere. Those, those who limit their praying to only asking for things is missing out on the blessing that come along with uh, using prayer as a means of praising the Lord and making intercession for others. You know what? Most of the time we pray, Brother Mike, it's things for who? Me. Pray, give me. We forget about intercession for somebody else. Blessing other people through prayer. Praising the Lord. Have you ever prayed and just wanted this praising? It's praising. It's praising. Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. I just want to praise you for saving me. Saving my family. Praise you, Lord. I just, want to, I just want to praise you, Lord. Praise you in the morning. I was going to praise you all day long. Well, praising the Lord. Well, always praising the Lord and making 
intercession because of it. Well, we always want to start out, Lord, bless me. Why not just start out asking God to bless others rather than yourself? Hmm? And you'll be better off, I believe. When you pray for somebody else to be blessed, guess what? You're going to get blessed. Hmm? That's a blessing in itself. Huh? Uh, our companions in prayer, in the Spirit. Did you know that the Spirit of God helps our praying? When we don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit helps us pray. Did you know that? I heard somebody say, well, that's speaking in tongues. I said, no, 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 that ain't speaking in tongues. I disagree with that. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit knows our infirmities and knows what we need eat for we know and he'll help us pray tell us what to pray for who to pray for hmm? well uh, I've, I've talked to people that I pray for and they, some people don't even know you're praying for preachers told me this many a times he said brother Ron I prayed for you yesterday about 12 o'clock. I said, I knew somebody was praying. How did you know that? I said, I just felt the presence of God talking about so and so time. But what was it? I knew somebody was praying. Yeah. You can tell because you feel the presence of God. Let me tell you something. I've been in prayer meetings before in churches like the Ford Church. And sometimes I was, God, I was afraid to move. Afraid to move. That the Spirit of God was moving. I said, if I move, I'm going to interrupt something. I don't want to interrupt nothing. Hmm? So I'd be afraid to move. And I didn't move, huh? Well, yeah. Sometimes the prayer must sometimes be just praising and making intercession for other people. Our compassion in prayer. In the Spirit. Well, the Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit helps us in our prayers. Then it's our determination in using the secret weapon. Mm, we ought to have a determination to use this secret weapon, prayer. Determine to pray. If you don't feel like praying, pray anyway. If you don't feel like praying, pray till you do feel like praying. Huh? Just pray. Well, if we are to truly be effective, then uh, it, uh, our prayer cannot be a hit and miss uh, proposition. Sometimes it's just hit and miss. Pray a little bit here, pray a little bit there. We hit and miss. It should be a constant, consistent, and centered on God. When we pray, we will have our mind stayed on God, centered on God. Who we're talking to. You ever talk to somebody and they won't look you in the eye? Better watch them people. We can get eyeball to eyeball with God. And he'll watch us. You, you should try. When you talk to somebody sometimes and you try to look up, yeah, you better watch them people. They're telling you something. Don't lay right. They won't look you eye to eye. Mm. Well, we're going to be effective. We cannot be hit and miss in our proposition. It should be constant and centered on God. All use of the action we hear to teach us about using prayer more effectively. Remember when you first got saved? I didn't know how to pray. Still don't know how to pray. Sometimes if this word spewed out, but I listen to old timers pray, and son, they could rain the glory of God down. Amen. And I started listening to them. And I wanted to pray like them, so I started sort of imitating them a little bit. And guess what? I started feeling the presence of God. I knew what they I knew they knew how to pray. There were certain people in the church that I had called when I needed somebody to pray for me. I ain't gonna call everybody in the church to pray for me. Well, some people can't pray. They was like me. It was just hit and miss. 
And I knew the old timers in the church, they could get a hold of God. They could grab a hold of the horns of the altar and get a hold of God in an instant. Hmm? Well, I'll use just some action words here to teach us about using prayer more effectively. The Bible says we need to be alert, be watched for every opportunity to pray and watching for things that hinder us. Be on the lookout for things that might hinder you. The places you go, the people you uh, come in contact with, hmm? how you use your words. Be active and preserving. This, this means to keep on praying until the answer comes. We can pray and pray and pray sometimes and don't get an answer. And you know what happens? You throw your hands up and say, well, what's the use? What am I praying for? I ain't getting no answer. Well, pray till you get an answer. How long does that take? Whenever God sees fit to answer your prayer. It'll often take weeks. It'll often take months. Huh? God is not an instant coffee person. You got to get all of God. Keep praying. Don't give up. Well, too often we stop before the Spirit says stop or give up. We need to keep on praying until the answer comes. Hmm? Have you prayed and prayed over something and not get an answer? What do you usually do? You stop praying. How long do you stop praying about that situation? You stop praying, you stop praying about everything. You quit praying. It didn't work in that situation. It's not going to work in this situation. We must be asking. Supplication for all saints. All saints, folks. Hmm. All saints, we are not in the, uh, the battle line, folks. We are in the presence of God. You see, we need to remember that, folks. All around us are other Christians who are struggling and fighting and, and uh, fighting the devil just like we are. Did you know that? When we're praying, always remember, there's other people having the same kind of struggle you do. They're probably praying for you too. Always remember that. Our duty is to pray for each other. It's our, it's our duty. It's our God-given right to pray for each other. Hmm? Well, why should we pray for each other? I'm glad you asked, folks. We are all in the, on the same side. We're in God's army, and the same army. Regardless of how some act, we're not enemies. You're not my enemy. You're my brother if you're saved. Huh? Hmm? But anyway, the Bible teaches we need to pray. Not only for those that's in the same household, but for our enemies. Huh? Have you got any enemies? that don't maybe have a real heartfelt enemy, but somebody that maybe don't like you. But let me tell you something. Start praying for them. It'll change their mind about you. And they'll be your best friend one day if you keep praying for them. Well, we're on the same side. We're in the God's army. Mm -hmm. You know, and we look, if we're in the same army of God, God don't look at rank. He can answer my prayer just like he does the pastors. He can answer your prayer just like he does me. Hmm? He can answer the kids' prayer just like he does ours. Huh? Get children praying for you and you watch God. He'll move. Well, Regardless of how some act, we are not enemies. There's some people that I used to go to church with, hey, I didn't particularly like. They weren't my enemy. It was the devil. We are all prone to fall into evil sometimes and fail. All we need, we all need the help of those around us to help us get through. 
I need you to help me get through. I need you praying for me. You need me. I need to be praying for you. Hmm? Hmm. Have you ever been praying? I used to, we used to have a Monday night prayer meeting over here. I don't know if some of y'all remember. Carl, you remember, don't you? I remember sometimes we'd, we'd gather in here and get around the hall and start praying. And we'd go around on, and touch each pew. Realizing where people sat, I'd, we'd go right there where William sat would say. You know where William sat there all the time? Oh, bless little William and his family and all this. All that. We'd know where everybody sat. And if we didn't know who sat on that pew, we'd ask them to bless them during the week. we bless those that come in this Sunday and sit on this pew, Lord. Well, pray. Praying with discipline. Not giving up. Hmm. Hmm. Because that, uh, <clears throat> the Bible says, if we love somebody, why wouldn't you want to pray for them? Do you love your church people? Why don't you pray for them? Well, by your love for one another, people will know that we are his so, if you say you love somebody, you're going to pray for them. Hmm? If you say you love me, folks, don't you talk about my back, behind my back. You need to get it right. Instead of talking about me, talk to God about me. Amen? Amen? You see, it is an impossibility to pray for someone when bitterness, anger, and unforgiveness and hatred toward them. You can't pray for them. If you got bitterness in your heart toward someone, if you got anger toward someone, if you got unforgiveness for someone, and you got hatred in your heart for someone, you cannot pray for them because your prayers will not be answered until you get right with God. Hmm? Impossibility. Oh, you can pray. But when them prayers go up, it's going to hit the ceiling and bounce right back down. It ain't going nowhere. Hmm. Nothing you can do will help your uh, brother more than uh, helping them carry his burden. You see somebody down and out? That load is too hard to carry. We need to lift them up. Help them carry that burden. Pray for them. That God would release the energy of the power of the Holy Ghost on their life. The church and its people need prayer. The church needs prayer. Our church needs prayer, folks. Hmm? Where are the people at today? Huh? I'm concerned about the church. Look around this morning and see those that's not here. Call them. Tell them they was missed. Well, our church needs prayer. Hmm. You'll never know when our prayer is exactly what others need. Have you ever been praying for somebody and don't know why you're praying for them? It was because God put them on your mind? You might not know what they need, but pray for them anyway. This ask God, say, God, I don't know why you put their, them on my mind, but they got a need in their life, and I'm asking you, dear God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, 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 in the name of Jesus, uh, of heaven, Lord, to meet their needs according to your riches and glory. And guess what? God will meet that need. Well, I'm asking you this morning to put your life into prayer line and pray for those that are needed most. Pray for the lost. Hmm? Pray for the saved. Some people think just because we're saved, well, we've all got it going on. Well, that's not exactly the truth, folks. Just because we're saved, we might not have it going on. Hmm? The Christians face the same obstacles as an unsaved person. We're in the world, but not of the world. We're going to face trials and tribulations and things that's going to try to trip us up. But always remember, when you fall, we got somebody there to help us. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. 
when we fall, he's got a hand that's going to pick us up. He'll never leave us or forsake us. Always remember, we're praying. When we pray, we ain't praying to some Mohammed. Hmm? We're praying to a God of the universe, a God that created this world, hmm? that slung the stars in the orbit. We're praying to a God that hears and answers our prayers this morning. May God be exalted today. May you have a great, wonderful afternoon. I look forward to seeing you. For those that you're not coming on Wednesday, we're having a great time on Wednesday. So come and enjoy the fellowship once again on Wednesday evening. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, I ask you, God, to just be with us, Lord, as we go to our separate ways today and to our homes, Lord. And I pray, God, and I've said something, Lord, that might encourage our people today, Lord. Lord, I look around this morning and many people are missing today. Where they're at, I don't know, God. But I know, God, many are just neglecting the assembling up together with God's people. And I realize, Lord, if it's happening in our church, it's happening in other churches. I pray, God, this day that you'll get a hold of God's people and let them see, Father, that they need to be in the house of God and in their respective places each time the church is having services, Lord. Thank you, God. Bless you. I thank you for saving me, Lord. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here today.